We tried, do you know Wayne's World? Yeah. And <laughs> five, four, You don't have to live with pain or chronic neuro issues any longer. In this podcast, you will learn how to stabilize your brain, body, and biochemistry for the rest of your life. I'm Dr. Teams, and this is the Neuro Reset Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Neuro Reset Podcast. Today, we have Debbie with us, and I'm not going to be able to do her justice introducing her, so I'm going to have her do all of that for us. Uh, But before we get to that, we're going to cover things today like how to help young people learn about the nervous system, what that does in terms of later in life type of function, what things like trauma and things like that can present as later in life, and um, really how to help people just overcome those issues. We'll describe a little bit about what we do here at the office, the options uh, that Debbie has for people, all the cool things she's doing, and. Um, Yeah, and hopefully you enjoyed the episode. So welcome, Debbie. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to be here. Um, Debbie Chamberlain, teaching was my heart. I just retired from teaching in 2021. I was an elementary school teacher. So uh, the little people of the world, that is just what I love to be part of. They are our future, right? They are our future, so we better take care of them. So thank you for doing what you do. Absolutely, absolutely. And since retiring, I have decided that that um, really my mission is to try to bring mindfulness practices to as many kids, teens, families as I possibly can. So since then, I have been uh, certified in mindfulness through Mindful Schools. I also am a certified yoga instructor, so 500 hours, yes, through Breathe for Change. What I loved about that is it had a trauma-informed component to it all social social emotional learning so um and i loved it because it was social emotional learning but it, they called it self because it was to remind yourself that it starts with you so i am founder of mindfulness matters which intentionally is spelled m y so being a teacher it was really hard for me to misspell mindfulness oh, trust <laughs> but, me i would have been the worst student i was not the best english student gotcha. but I think I can speak better than I write. There you go, there you go, and that's great, that's awesome. But I did spell it M-Y because of the importance of starting with our own personal practice. So that's intentional with pretty much all of everything that I do is how to make sure that we're coming from a regulated system for ourselves and that's how the best gift that we can give anybody around us, but especially our little people. So, um, and then I also um, have a certification in health and wellness through Southwest Institute of Healing Arts. And that was a deep dive in how, you know, to help bring health and wellness to the overall capacity of our overall wellness. So that's, that's my passion. And then along with that, because being the teacher in me, uh, I decided to write children's books. So now I have eight um, self-published books all about teaching kids mindfulness tools, things that can support them, that they can learn as early as preschool, all the way through their life so that they have these tools. That is so cool. So I go to schools and I do author visits. I go into schools and teach these specific lessons um, using the books. They have journals with them. Uh, So that's just, yeah. As you can tell, this is my. Favorite. Oh, of course, you can you can smell it in the room, right? There you go. Um, there the passion is 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 more than there, right? Yeah. Um, so, is did you mention the nonprofit stuff that you work with? Yes. So I am also a um, mindfulness coordinator with a nonprofit called Amanda Hope Rainbow Angels. So what we do is we help support children with cancer and other life threatening illnesses. Yeah, and um, so we bring integrative healing practices to not just our warriors, but our entire, their entire family, their caregivers, their siblings. And we do this in a variety of ways. We, we bring the books in and, and I'll share the books and teach the, the skills. Um, I do that in schools as well, but I also do it with our, with our families. Uh, we also have partnered with Southwest Institute of Healing Arts, and we have the graduates and the students come in and provide um, integrated practices like Reiki, sound healing, massage, um, you know, reflexology, polarity, cranial, all different types of integrative practices Mm -hmm. so that they, you know, our caregivers can come from a a regulated system to help support their warrior as they're going through this journey. Sure. So that is, um, 
we were just in an event where we were doing equestrian therapy with our families and so we were with the horses and we had sound healing there and yoga and uh you know yeah that's amazing yeah so uh well that's the episode everybody no I'm totally, yeah. that's uh, that's really good stuff there um yeah. so so let's talk i, I want to hear more about the books Okay. So, is are you ready for that? Do you want to dive uh, yeah, in? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's. I'll just light up even thinking so, about it, and I brought them too. So, so um, why specifically? I guess retiring, and obviously you're not retired, but you're retired yeah. from teaching. <laughs> retired from teaching. So, so what? What does what drove what what motivated you to do this? Yeah. The, this venture. That is a great question, and I will just go back to, um, you know, 2020. I was teaching and uh, it was a challenging time with COVID. And so the kids, and I had already started the mindfulness program in the district I was at. So we already came from a place of, um, you know, very much about like brain science. The kids the kids know about, you know, their nervous system. They know the, the words, which we'll talk about um, in, a, in a few moments when I go over the books. And so then, then COVID happened and everybody's nervous systems became very dysregulated all around the world, but in education, it, w it was a very, very big thing, you know. Uh, so we started doing mindful moments while we were doing online school, and we were doing them before, but they, they became very, very intentional. The kids we did, would even ask for them. So that uh, what a mindful moment was, was an intentional pause where we would focus on breath. Sometimes it would be positive affirmations. Sometimes it would be a, some type of activity where we were connecting with, them, you know, like with another yeah, saying, you know, a compliment to a friend or something, some type of a connection to help. Positive just, peace. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just to help build us up. And um, it was just as much for me as it was for the kids. And then when they came back in person, you know, that, that was a big... So that was over Zoom? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You were doing that. With, oh, you were already doing that like remotely we were, in a way. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Okay. So I didn't always, realize that. Yeah. So we had to go, you know, on online and then we didn't have a choice, but it was, you know, to teach them about, you know, longer exhale. I mean, we did all the things to try to help them, um, you know, and then they came in person and we started doing them in, in person. And then I started um, putting them on Google Slides and the kids were helping me write the, the, the you know, like different the moments things, and the context. Yeah. And it was like, you know, I need this to be a book because other people were like, can you share that? Can you share that? And I'm like, well, how can I do this? So I figured out how to publish them on Amazon and you know I'd go wow. to different classrooms at that time I was job sharing so I'd volunteer on my days off to go into different grade levels so I had sixth graders I had junior high I had all different input from different age kids mm -hmm. and I would share the book and then um, yeah we tweaked it and then I published the first one and then I just couldn't stop so then it became um, you know that was just was the mission just right? the mission yeah. and so now there's books about gratitude uh, got, and they're all encompassed around bugs because trying to, you know, connect with kids Keep in the way that they too, want right? to. Yeah. So Gus the Grumpy Grasshopper finds gratitude. So, and what's great is each book has activities that a parent or a teacher can share right then, you know, so it's, it's meant to be very interactive. Oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, so yeah. give me an example. So, so how many, well, first, how many characters are there? Okay. So I have. I just love them. I get so attached to them. So Busy Bee Learns to Be, and that's, um, Busy Bee is all about super, super busy, which I'm sure you can relate as an adult, right? So uh, I'm guessing and, learning to be present, right? Yes, yeah. learning to be present in the moment. So one fun activity that we do with the kids with that is, you know, we have a glitter jar and you shake it up and then you watch the glitter settle. They love making those, but we talk about how our nervous systems will start to get super activated. And when they do, you feel like, that like in the, the glitter, jar, like yeah. the glitter in the jar. So um, we'll do it. B breath. Have you ever done B breath before? No, let's do it. So okay, so if you take your your thumb and you go like this, mm -hmm. and then you cover your eyes mm -hmm. and you take a deep breath in, and then you buzz out like a bee. So bzzz. so how do you feel? And so we'll do like three of them in a row. But, you know, vagus nerve activation with that and humming, it's going to activate that vagus nerve and kick you into parasympathetic. So sure. that can be helpful. And so we'll teach that. That one's another fun where we'll, we'll grounding in nature. So like taking a moment to like look at the clouds in the sky and they love to like, you know, that cloud looks like a turtle or that cloud looks like a butterfly. So having those practical skills. So Busy Bee is all about that. 
Lily, the lovable ladybug. She is all about kindness. She goes and she spreads kindness to all of her bug friends, like, I'm gonna help you do this, I'm gonna help you do this. And then at the end of the book, she looks in the reflection of the pond after saying, have I helped everybody I need to help? And then she looks at the mirror herself and says, oh, I need to help one more bug. And then it's herself. So the, really the importance, you know, the my behind mindfulness matters, the importance of- And, and that's the caretaker right there. Yeah. Right? And that's, uh, that's big in five in our world too oh, here. Oh, 100%. So yes, kindness, but, and being kind to yourself. So that, that's positive affirmation. So, uh, you know, I'll have, when I work with kids, especially, I've done this in large assemblies. I used to host the assemblies in my school. And we would, you know, I am courageous. And they'd stand, I am courageous. But feeling that with every part of you, you know, where they stand up, you know, big and proud. So. Because, you know, and it's, it's unfair, I think, in some cases, or all cases, that not all kids can feel like that, you know, can yeah. feel courageous. And, yeah. And, love themselves and things mm -hmm. like that and it's not usually any fault of their own right you know, there's so many barriers and yeah obstacles. there's so many minds out there that it's hard for everybody to be 100 percent all the time or oh, yeah. all the time and, you know even even ourselves like stuff goes wrong we just try not to talk about it right? yeah. sometimes we have to to just get it out yeah you know we've seen people that bottle things up too um, from even a young age and we know what it does to that nervous system so and we'll talk a little more about that because we tend to see the, the tail end of that yes where you know you're watching it happen yes. from the young age and, um, and it's it's just really it's really i guess rewarding on both ends to be able to influence young people and then to be able to work with older folks um, or older people i guess you should say um, and to be able to make the changes and know that like we did our yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. Sorry, I interrupted. Keep going. No, I know there's no. more. I love everything. I, know there's more. That, I love everything you're saying. I just keep thinking when you were talking about, you know, you got to name it to tame it. You got to feel it to heal it. So, like Dan Siegel, he's like great with the whole, yeah. yeah. Um, especially with the name it to tame it. So you have to, you know, mindfulness is about being aware of the present moment with curiosity and care. So we can't, you know, we can have all the mindfulness tools. We can, you know. We do need to be aware of where we're feeling it, not just in our mind and our thoughts, but you know where are we feeling it in our bodies. So these are explicit lessons yeah. that are taught that I teach to kids all the yeah. time, and of course teaching them you know through the structure of yeah. the books is is super helpful. Um, so after Lily is Gus and he's the he's the mm -hmm. gratitude, he's super grumpy um, because all the leaves are blowing everywhere. And then he goes through and his bud friends help him understand the circle of control, things we can control, things we can't control, and also how, you know, gr I mean, gratitude scientifically, if you express gratitude, it's going to rewire your brain for happiness. For sure. Just like with anything, we know with neuroplasticity, we have to practice it. I can't just go to the gym one time and think, okay, I've got this. I, you know, I, I don't need to work out anymore. I need we to. We should bring her in, shouldn't we, Reed? We should. <laughs> yeah. For sure, we need to, we need to get you a book for our, for our adults. Oh um, yeah, you know, if you don't have one, that's the next one. I do. I have you a, do? I have a whole program that I do with adults, and I Love do have a journal with adults, um, because I do understand the importance of making sure that the the older people in our world, like if they didn't get your training, yeah, exactly. Then here it is. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I was in my certification for with mindful schools, they they said one thing that just. They said, if you do nothing else with this, it was a pretty extensive certification that lasted a couple of years and very in depth. And um, they said, if you do nothing else with this, your regulated nervous system is the best gift that you can give others. I mean, if you do nothing else with this, just regulating yourself is going to be helpful. So I think that that's why it's important to help, you know, whomever it is that, yeah. that, that needs help. And these are the tools, you know, looking at the, that's something I do now. I don't like to fly. So anytime that I go on an airplane, I'm constantly looking at those clouds. I'm being busy bee and I'm just, you know, okay, I've got to, you know, yeah. regulate myself. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, then came Colby and Colby is all about he's a caterpillar. Um, he creates calm. So super busy in the garden we used to create we had a uh, mindfulness room in our um, school and then we had calm corners in each of our classrooms and that was a place that was it again we taught the kids how to use it but it was a place for them to be able to go to use their tools to regulate 
um, in the state. Like each corner was a little different tool? Um, well, no, the, each class had one corner and then oh, all okay. the tools were within that, oh, okay. in cool. that corner. So they had, my, had a journal, they had their calm model, they had fidget toys, um, they had breathing posters on the wall. So that book teaches kids how to create a calm corner. And then as for the adult, they said all the stuff needed. If they don't know how to do a calm corner or help, mm -hmm. a, help a you know child create one, then they can do it. So. Yeah. You know, it's interesting you talk about the calm corner, like and for adults, most adults don't have, like the, the bedroom's supposed to be the place of relaxation, but everybody's right. got TV, they've got Netflix, they've got all these other distractions that keep them ramped up and, and not engaged in what they're supposed to be doing. So yeah. it's, uh, it's very interesting. By the way, we might have a delivery. My, my lunch, I think, is showing up. Oh, so, nice. Your, your headset. So uh, thank you for that. <laughs> Well, that's, uh, you know, the stuff that you're providing and creating is, I mean, I don't even know if you can measure the impact that it really has because, I mean, gosh, we're looking 50, 60 years down the road for one book that's read, you know, for yeah. one kid. Yeah. That's what's that's... cool about it. If you haven't looked at that it That just like gave that, me chills. Yeah. I mean, you know, we see people in here that haven't had you know, and I might come to tears here. We've got somebody that we're, we actually, so let me back up. So what we do here at the office is we basically, for lack of a better phrase, we are personal trainers for the nervous system, right? And so repetition, staying on top of it, being consistent. And if you dedicate and do the things that your trainer asks, like you're going to usually have really good outcomes. Um, we tend to see people that have been through all that stuff that you're describing without the book. And, you know, a lot of our patients have been subjected to traumas, whether it's physical or mental abuse, sometimes worse, um, car accidents, uh, you know, things like illnesses and viral loads, like through COVID and stuff like that, that kicked up a lot of people's symptoms. But the ones that, that really are dealing with all the trauma, and now they're adults and they're trying to make it work and their nervous systems are like 11 out of 10 and they're burning up as we speak. Um, those are the ones that we have a huge, huge passion for helping because nobody else seems to want to or be able to. So we had a, we had a lady come in last week, and I'm going to try my best not to cry here, but ultimately she came in because she had a concussion. She had a couple of concussions in her life and was dealing with this dysautonomia stuff and POTS, right? Um, when I was asking about these head injuries she had, I was like, when was the first one? She goes, when I was in eighth grade. And she just stopped. And I was like, could you tell me about that? Well, it was my dad. So her dad beat her up. Yeah. And sorry, it's coming. But, <clears throat> you know, when, when you look at somebody's nervous system, you know, the kid's job is to be a kid. And, and the adult's job is to help show that kid what is possible. Right. And so this poor girl has never had the ability to feel safe, comfortable, or know what like that feels like. So, long story short, couldn't af couldn't afford the care here, and so what we what we do uh, once a quarter is we offer scholarship program to people who can't afford the care. Wow. And so she's coming down this week, and um, I, I fought back wow. real hard to keep the tears back. Yeah, if you need one, you. go for it. But uh, so she's starting this week. And we're really, really, really excited to have the opportunity to help her wow. for like a fraction of the cost. And so um, you've got to, yeah, like I always say, I would do this for free if I could. Um, but the reality is we've got to keep the doors open. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, those kinds of cases are the ones that we get a, not the most out of, but yeah. there's a little bit extra, a little, right. little cherry on top with those, um, just to know that we had an impact because if you go to the gym for three months and you lift all the right weights, like you're not going to, you're the only choice you have is to change. Right, right. And we know that people want to change. They just don't really have a lot of the tools or the know-how or the guide to get them there. Yeah. And so, you know, I know getting your passion project in front of more people, whether it be parents mm -hmm. or adults, uh, parents or kids, you know, I mean, the world's going to be a better place. So, yeah. so that's what's really exciting. Well, I just first of all want to say thank you because yes, the, I'm a crier, so the tears are going to come yeah. too, you know. But thank you for what you're doing because that's amazing that you recognize a need and you figure out how to help 
that person fit within it, you know, yeah. and that. So thank you for and that. This person is also a caretaker of a special needs kid. Mm -hmm. So all of their resources and time are already pressed wow. on top of the trauma they dealt with as a child, on top yeah. of leaving home as soon as they could, on top of, you know, maybe having a kid before they were supposed to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if everything will work out, you just yeah. gotta, you know, reach out for help sometimes. Yeah. Certainly folks like us, I know, will bend over backwards to make sure they get that yeah. home. So. That scholarship program just sounds like yeah. it's amazing. And so uh, that's, I mean, another conversation we may want to have about the nonprofits yeah. stuff, trying to figure out a funding opportunity Thank for you. people uh, that would be huge for me that's like my second life goal instead of trying to fix everybody you yes. know myself included yeah. uh, but like having the resources and, and options for people that don't have access yes. uh, to get the help they need that's another huge huge passion that's probably the second half of my life kind of thing oh nice well when so you're we'll, ready we'll talk. let me know we will talk we'll I, figure I, it out I, yeah I can definitely yeah, give yeah. some information on that. I'm really excited about that. Yeah. So, so, um, gosh, sorry, kind of got sidetracked wow. there. I so, so thing. what's, um, are you still going into schools and doing all that stuff? How do, yeah. how does somebody, if anybody that's listening is say a teacher or a principal, how do they get into, how do they book you? How do they? I have a website. Okay. So mindfulnessmatters.com. With a Y. And, um, M Y. Yeah, yes. Uh -huh. M Y. So that is. Uh, it has all of my information. Has all the books. Uh, and so I, like I said, I go do author visits all the time. Uh, I've gone into individual classrooms uh, so that I can do more of a deep dive yeah. into a specific. I have a book called Sammy Spider Speaks, and it is uh, about mindful communication. So it's really like Marshall Rosenberg's nonviolent communication, but it's sure. kind of you know, brought down to like a little kid level. Yeah. And so it teaches kids the peace process and how, you know, when you're having conflict with someone, someone how you can do that, um, express your, you know, your requests, your needs in a very clear and kind way. So, you know, that one I do a lot where it's a smaller classroom so we can really dive in and do some um, more role playing. And so, yeah, and then, you know, like I said, I do a, still do a lot of stuff with um, Amanda Holt, so I am so we, we hold our events there, yeah. and um, I do individual coaching with kids often, so I call it mindset coaching, but it's MY. Yeah. <laughs> so it helps them, um, and, and we do skills um, where we go through building the mindful toolbox, which has a zillion tools. I mean, we breath work is a huge one because mm -hmm. we know that that's one of the, you know, easy, it's accessible, when it's we're free. anywhere, yeah, it's, it's free, free, and it's your superpower. But we, you know, we'll, we might do alternate nostril breathing or box breathing, or little kids, you yeah. know, like bee breath or ladybug breath, or just you know, always trying to meet a, a child where they're at. Totally. Um, you know, so I've worked with teens, I've worked with adults, I've worked with kids uh, on how to help um, build that mindful toolbox. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, now, is this like a kit, like a box that you actually get, or? With, is it a toolbox, like a literal toolbox? So, no, I'm that's joking. So cute. But you know what's so funny is there's a whole lesson that I do with kids where we do build an actual oh, toolbox. Oh, I love it. And so I love it's it. like this. That's why I'm laughing because yes, I, yes. Oh, yes. that's so awesome. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's cool. So, um, like, is there? Obviously, you said the stuff's on Amazon too. Yeah. Um, so is, all my books are on Amazon. There, um, I have. I actually create kits with all the books too. So. Like Busy Bee Learns to Be has a journal that goes with this, so it's a write-in okay. journal, and then it has a little breathing buddy, so that they can use the breathing buddy, like it's a bee, yeah. and they put it on their belly, and they can watch it rise, and then it has other different mind. They make a puppet so that they can act out the story. Uh -huh. So it be just to try to move. each each kit has its own thing and its own theme, um, but it comes with all of the stuff needed to you know just enrich the story because just the it's not right? yeah, it's not yeah. just reading a story. It's it's like in it, there's, you know, here's, here's circle of control. This is how you, you know, reframe your thinking. Right. Like it gives the steps on how to do that yeah. so that, like I said, a teacher, a parent can, can know exactly, you know, this right. is how you teach a child about their amygdala prefrontal cortex They're you know, and I have, and I know it's, I'll have kindergartners. Well, that's, talk this, about this is when we first met in yeah. the clinic. You were talking about this, yes. I'm like you're teaching kindergartners about the prefrontal cortex. Oh, go on. Hundred <laughs> percent. You, you know, know, tell me more. And they because we do it through puppets. So I mean, you, you know, you know, they have like you know for the security guard, it's a 
it's a dog and so you know it's your amygdala and so they'll you know your dog starts barking when it feels you know but we talk about that sometimes like if I drop my pencil I might feel that feeling of um, the dog barking but am I really in danger you know right. and so okay what can I do to help calm myself down which tool am I going to pull from my toolbox is it my breathing do I need to do a quick reframe and again these are you know I always think you know cause obviously being a teacher I would never just put a book in front of a child and say read you know, I mean, you teach the letter sounds and you teach the sight words and then you have the phonemes, like you teach the steps. And it's the same thing with, with social emotional learning and mindfulness. Mm -hmm. I do the same thing. I, I teach, I explicitly teach, you know, this is in for two, out for four. You know, where are you feeling that in your body? You know, is your heart racing? Like, so it's, it's that, you know, really sitting down and, and teaching kids how to use the tools. So, yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. How does how does someone listening choose the right toolkit? Oh, that's such a great question. I love that. I think that it's I I use this on like meeting people where they're at. So whether no matter what age they're at. So if first of all it comes with aware, awareness. So if I'm working with a smaller child, you know, oftentimes parents or even teachers, whomever wants to go in and try to get into the reason part of their you know like. Well, just calm down, stop crying, or, or try to talk to them about what's happening. So it's recognizing, you know, they're in full amygdala, amygdala yeah. mode. So really, it's about regulation. It's yeah. about how do I, how do I get them regulated? So when, when she's saying amygdala mode, we're saying fight or flight. They're running from yes. the bear, right? Yes, they're and running so, from the bear. Uh, it's like fight, flight, or freeze. Yes. Right. And then we can get into the polyvagal theory a little bit and talk about that some. But but yeah, amygdala. When she mentions yeah. that, that's what she's talking that's about. That's and you know the kids. Oh, the kids, the kids will, you know, because they'll be like, my dog's barking, or the amygdala, and, and I'll have five-year-olds use that word amygdala, and we'll do, you know, amygdala, we'll count the syllables, we'll say it different ways so that they really get it. They'll know about their hippocampus, we'll be like, if you, you know, the part of your brain that remembers, and they'll like, okay, give it a good massage, especially yeah. before you take a test. Your prefrontal cortex, you know, give it a good massage. What is its job? It's the wise owl, so we'll get the owl puppet. Um, so I, it's, first of all, helping the child to, to regulate in whatever way that is. Even giving them a hug, giving them a hug, if that's appropriate in the situation totally. that you're in. Um, sometimes, you know, I'd have kids like, if you like put your hands on my do buddy, do buddy breathing, mm -hmm. and so it's just, you know, breathe in, breathe out, but just having that contact, you know, to be able to inhale and exhale and that, that mirror like neuron. regulate together, yeah. Yeah, those mirror neurons um, can help. And again, like in, you know, depends on your situation if you can't do that or not, you know. And so even if it's, if you can't have, then it's just, your intentional breaths can help to, to regulate a kiddo. Um, and then once they're calm, that's when you can say, you know, whatever the situation is. It's a conversation. Yeah, yeah, that's where you, and then you have, you know, we do a lot with like recognizing emotions like as colors, you know, so zones of regulation is, you know, red being, not, all emotions are okay. okay. They're just yeah. information. So a red emotion isn't bad, it's just, oh, this, that's Maybe a pretty intense, yeah. yeah, it's an intense emotion. And so that's gonna take, you know, maybe more more of an intense tool, like, yeah. you know, and more, maybe more help. Sure. Um, whereas yellow and like your green emotion, you're good to go, you're blue, feeling, you know, kind of lethargic or whatever, so maybe you need to get up and exercise. Yeah. That would be a tool that you would use for I that. mean, these toolkits, in all honesty, sound like adults need them just as much as kids. Oh, um, 100%. And even, even at the, sim the simple level of talking about, like, being the bugs and the characters, I mean, it, it applies throughout a yeah. like, human's life. Oh, know? yeah. And I'm just thinking about all our cases that we work with, and I mean, just having this book as an option, right? Mm -hmm. We have a negative self-talk book that we hand out, yeah. uh, but this might be even more beneficial to have in the office and share with patients. So oh. like, we just give them the book yeah. when, they, when they start their care. It's like, start off like this, yeah. right? Um, and it's really, it, it's a short read, it's like an hour, but it's like at a fairly high level. And right. so, um, I've know, had hard. adults buy my books and then well, <laughs> you know yeah. I'm, I'm almost wondering if there's like a collaborative thing here where yeah. we can do, we can create this for these people going to care yeah. and fully understanding what is going on so they can yeah. communicate with us better or to their loved ones better right um, you know it's yeah. just it's so it's so powerful when you can get this nervous system under control like yes. you know when you're if you're as an example like an adult let's say our heart rate goes up well, why does our heart rate go up? Either because our blood pressure is low or because we're running from the bear. Generally, to keep yeah. it simple. Or yeah. your fight or flight system is cranked. Yeah. And here's one of the things that I kinda, I'm kind of going to segue 
maybe around, it might be confusing, but I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet, right? When, when all these bugs aren't doing their job, we get chaos, mm -hmm. right? You know, you talk about the prefrontal lobe as the owl, I say, when the cat's away, the mice will play. Yeah. yeah. The mice being like the amygdala system, right? When the prefrontal system and the frontal system shut down, that means we're in survival mode. And so when we hit survival mode or we have that fight or flight system activate, usually in our predecessors, right, we're all running from a bear, trying to survive, literally. Mm -hmm. Now we have people sitting at a computer screen and they're running from a bear neurologically, but they're physically sitting still. So what happens? We get constriction in all of our vessels, so we get lack of proper blood flow to all the areas of the brain and body. So symptom-wise, we're going to get brain fog, dizziness, maybe focus and attention issues, you might have headaches or migraines, you might have chronic fatigue, you might have tingling or numbness in your fingers or toes, you might have digestion issues, you might have insomnia, right? All of these issues that pretty much all of our patients present with are in that fight or flight system, right? And so if they just understood a little bit more and had kind of the beginning stages of how to engage with the system appropriately, yeah. and had a little bit of a guide Oh, that'd make our job so much easier. One, yeah. but two, you could get, you could, we could help so many people. Oh my gosh, you're I so just... right. And I mean, my story comes with that. I mean, I didn't learn about, I didn't, I didn't know these words. I didn't know neuroplasticity until I started my training. It's been about eight years. Had I had known, and this. Why did you go into that training? What made you go into that training specifically? Because you're still myself. a teacher. Yeah, okay. for myself. I My nervous system was so dysregulated. I mean, The Body Kept the Score. That is an amazing yep. book if you've ever, have you read it? I'm sure you have. Um, but Excuse me. It's like. Hard for a lot of people to digest. That's a thick book. It's, it very is. Very small writing, too. It, it, very small writing. It's, I, I listened to it, too, so that helped as well. Oh, yeah. So I did audio and then read it. But, you know, there's a lot in it and, and just yeah, your body will store that. So even if your mind is telling you, you're fine, you're fine, keep going, keep going, keep going, and you're, but you're con in constant fight or flight, your body will, like you said, you'll have the ailments that you were talking about. And so that was starting to happen to me on a personal level, and I just thought, there has got to be another way. Like, there, there doesn't, I just don't need to, whether it's the yes. system or yes. you know the kids that are coming into the system or what you have control over, right? With yeah. like what I can teach or what yeah. oh, I need to be able to do this. I need yeah. like ten more minutes, or, Ooh, right. and it's like outside of what you have control over, right? right. And, you know when when you are in that mindset mm -hmm. of it's just slightly out of my control, it's gonna fire that amygdala a little bit, yeah. and then you do that for how many years? Yeah, I mean I taught for nineteen years, so yeah. So let's say fifteen of those. Yeah. You know, and you're like, this is crazy. Yeah. Like to feel like this all the time yeah. is nuts. And it's when in our office we describe as that fight or flight goes up, you get further and further from being able to heal on your own. Yes. Right. From oh. that digest and repair. So like you're literally never going to get better if you're in a fight or flight state. So we always teach as part of our first exercise is basically calming down the nervous system because yeah. you can't you can't rebuild a house when it's on fire. Right. 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 Like, yeah. You got to calm it down. Yeah. You've got to teach people how to do it on their own, yeah. and then they start having these little breakthroughs. And it's like, great. Now let's press. Now let's turn the heat up on the healing side of things, right? And so, it's just it's very difficult to just do it on your own. Yeah. Um, you need people who know how to do it yeah. and do it day in and day out. You know. Absolutely. So it's. Uh, and I think you. I mean, everything that you just said. Yeah. And it's it's not just. I mean just life in general, whether it wasn't even just teaching, but just everything right. in life, it was like, you know, and when you love something so much and you want to do so well at whatever it is, mm -hmm. it, you know, it can, yeah, it can cause a lot. So when that, when that was happening, it, I, I love what you said, because I, I did, I needed help. I'm like, totally. Here's, and the learner in me, I mean, I'm constantly. Right. I'm and, like, and so it's I a little easier for you, way. right? So, it, it was yeah. probably a little easier for you to engage and kind of well, see the writing on the wall. And so, but you weren't, it sounds like you were still working, so your functional level was pretty high still. You were holding on. It might not have Barely. been. Barely. But you were functional. So that's usually around that 70% mark with our patients. Okay. People that are, as an example, people who are still working are usually about 70%. They tend to not work after 70%. Gotcha. Like that 60, 50, almost always they don't work or part-time. Anything below 50, they like can't work. Yeah. So we see people from 10 to 30%, all the way up to 70%, 80%. Yeah. And 
You just got to meet them where they are. But a lot of times it's, they're good at just pushing through, which is part of the problem in the first place, right? Yeah. Like you just keep going, burning the candle at both ends, not having the right tools, hoping something's going to change. But if you don't get the education on how to change yeah. it, it just keeps going. It gets worse and worse until, you know, whatever straw breaks the candle's yeah. back. Well, and actually, I did have to take a pause. Like, oh, you did? I, yeah, I was under the 50% where I had to oh, take wow. a slight pause and say, okay, what what do I need to do? Because it was... Yeah, it what did was, that look like? That, How did that present for you? It, constant anxiety. Just constant. Like, I felt the fight or flight. And now that I'm so good about understanding my body so well and the fact that I can feel the cortisol, I can feel when parasympathetic kicks in, like longer exhale, like it was just like physically yeah. just really, really debilitating. Yeah. And so that's when deep dive happened and within, I mean, really, once I learned how to do longer exhale, that was like, that's why I say breathing is your superpower. Yeah. And then that's when all the training started and I thought, there's something to this. There's right? something to this and why does, why are we not teaching every child how to do this? Because this would have drastically changed my life if I would have learned this as a child. Totally. And so one of my books is called Mindful Miley, and it's all about breathing. But Miley, spelled M-Y, is me as a, as a kid because I struggled with anxiety for so long that it was just really? part of... Well, and you just bring that into your adulthood. Yeah. Right? It, it, doesn't, it certainly sure. doesn't get easier, does it? No, and the body did keep yeah. the score from the time I was little. I didn't understand, you know, I mean, especially like the generation I was with, you just didn't talk about it. You're like, oh, you're totally. fine. Calm down. You're fine. Yeah, you were crazy. Yeah, talk don't cry. It. Like, so... Yeah, and then when I learned it, and, and it's completely transformed my life. I mean, I can, yeah, I don't even, there are no words to describe what learning about my nervous system and about my brain has done for me. Um, well, and, yeah. and for everybody else that you now get to touch, that is yeah. that is the coolest part. Well, it comes from a, a space of deep knowing. When somebody says, oh, what is it? You've I'm like, I, yep, I know what that feels like, you know? Um, maybe not their exact experience, but, you know, from my, because everybody has their own story, but... Yeah. I do know what it feels like to feel fight or flight yeah. in full fight or flight. Yeah, yeah. So. And, and, and it is interesting because everybody's a little different, right? So their yeah. fight or flight, it, it all matters, but it, it's subjective. For right? sure. Somebody can be 30% function, but they're still running a business. Yeah. Right? Somebody can be 70% function, but they can't work at all. Yeah, right? okay. Because the yeah. demand is so high of the job that they just can't even can't make it happen you know yeah um you know as an example like my wife has dealt with some trauma in the past um you know watched things happen in front of her that she's never going to be able to forget you know there's a death in front of her one of her friends and it was i don't know if i could ever see that you know she's never going to not see that i myself like i've never really had any major traumas and so it's hard for me to understand some of her nervous system when we're at a level of not thinking about, like not talking neuroplasticity, you know, yeah. but like people break stuff into relationships and then they try to make those function at the at a high level. And without some people knowing what's going on in their own nervous system or vice versa, not necessarily exactly knowing how to feel with where you've been. Mm -hmm. Like I've heard, I've heard it so many times, I can imagine exactly how people feel and I've been I've felt not good before. Mm -hmm. I've had anxious tendencies before. I've had depressive episodes before. And how you bounce back from those and how you use the tools versus just letting it happen and unfold, you know, it's like everybody's got their own way to deal with it. But I would say outside of developing my own training, reading and doing all the things, like I never would have figured it out. You right. know, I started it last year at 39. I started seeing it a therapist like hypnotherapy oh. for the first time in my life and it's been it's been amazing that's powerful. you know um, the subconscious is where everything lives right mm -hmm. so that's where most of our fight-or-flight stuff comes from yeah. and so um, that being said that's kind of my story right but if we were to teach this as part of a curriculum just have the whole class on it as opposed to some of the other things that they force in there or they take out right yeah. like get like get rid of PE Oh my God! Like, come on! Are you kidding me? We're like built to move. Or even art. Yes. Or like you know, because that's again and creativity. You know, and it's like we're just gonna train you how to go out in the workforce and, and like just be a yeah. robot. Like I don't know about that. Yeah. But anyway, that might be a different conversation yeah, for part for sure. two, maybe off camera. Yeah. But um, you know, uh, I think we're, we're 
this is moving really quickly. We're moving through our time already. So um, I can tell we're going to have a part two mixed in here. I would love that. And uh, I, I'm, I mean, we haven't even like scratched the surface no. and we could go for another couple hours, right? Um, we're, we're starting to compete with Joe Rogan now for those. Right? Podcasts, okay, right? there you go. I like but, it. You know, gosh, I don't even know where to go from here. Um, yeah, why don't we do this? Let's start to wrap up a little bit, and I want you to tell people exactly how to get a hold of you, okay? Where to find you? Uh, maybe the price of these books, so okay. so we know yeah. if it's something that people can yeah. afford, okay? Um, which I assume so. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Fill us in with all that. What's the best way to get a hold of you? Just some of this material, so that people can start on their own. Okay. Because I know a lot of people. It, Sometimes taking that first step is the hardest. Right. So where do we? Where would people start? Where would you want people to start here? So my website, like I said um, earlier, is www.mindfulnessmatters.com with M Y. Thank you, mindfulness, and pretty much everything is on there. Okay. How to you know how to get? So book with you. Booking. Okay. The books cool. are on there. The books are also on Amazon. I am on Instagram um, at mindfulness matters underscore between. Mindfulness and Matters. Okay, we'll find you. We'll, we'll, yes. we'll team up after this. Yes, yeah. that's perfect. I started following you. So, okay, great. Um, yes, and then um, Facebook, Mindfulness Matters, and then I do have YouTube, and I do have TikTok all under Mindfulness Matters. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, that's probably the best way. The kits are um, the kits are 33 but they come with, you know, like I said, the journal, mm -hmm. the puppet, everything that you need to help create an experience. So that's for the one book. toolkit, 33 bucks. Uh -huh. yep. Love it. Yep. And I have, um, and then the books are 11 and they're, yeah. And the four books are 11 as well. I do have online courses. I have two of them because I, again, I want things to be super, super easy. So one of the courses is for kids and it's me reading all the books. So it's, you know, in case you so it's kind of like your audible yes version, right? yes yeah. so but it's they get to see you know the the pages of the book and then uh it has different activities and i have lesson plans put together for a teacher but a parent could use them too so it, it fun activities that you can do yeah. to help teach about all the different eight concepts that i have throughout the books and then i do have a mind your mind workshop for adults that also comes with a journal that I've published that goes through and incorporates yoga and mindfulness. It coincides with the book, um, an eight week plan. Um, and so it's eight weeks on how to incorporate mindfulness into your life. So awesome. that's an online program as well that's self-guided, um, but then there's an option to meet with me as well. Um, and I do a lot of mindfulness coaching with kids. That's so. Awesome. So uh, before, hopefully we can't go too deep into this topic, but yeah. who, who would that coaching be good for? So I, I have coached kids. Um, so I'm not a licensed therapist, okay. so I just have to state to, that. So coaching, right? Yes, so so it is, coach. it yeah. is, yes. So I am certified in, like I said, yoga and mindfulness and health and wellness. And then also I'm a certified teacher. Uh, so I work with kids have for years, yes. decades. Uh, so I have a lot of kids. I've had kids preschool all the way through adults where they come in and we do like a wellness wheel and we'll decide what they want to work on. And it's all age appropriate, always meeting them where they're at. Sure. And then we generate a plan of different tools. So like, for example, today I'm working with a kiddo. We're going to be um, working on exhales. We're doing this bubble activity because anytime you do bubbles, you have to have a yeah, long exhale. Totally. And then we're creating an art activity with it where they're going to be um, making a creature that represents their um, anxiety. We don't look at anxiety as being like a negative thing, just right. as a, hey, and they name it. And then like, you know, like one of them names it Bitsy and Bitsy, you're doing fine. You know, so it's like, okay. so you yeah, can yeah, talk yeah. to them. Sure. Yeah. Now, um, so like what kind of symptoms might these kids coach with you Ooh, for? That's a great question. So like you mentioned anxiety, is it like ADD, ADHD, anything that people can very easily relate to that have maybe been coined in the yes. medical world? Um, that you can help with with that. I often I do work in conjunction sometimes with their therapists so sure. that I can I can be the person that first of all I'm easy easily accessible like they can like you, you know, don't need like a referral to come see you yeah, yeah and the pair and right and it I mean it is cheaper usually than a, a therapist um, you know because yeah because they have their licensing and, and stuff but they um, will a lot of kids that are expressing anxiety or needing to have like more of a 
positive affirmation, like growth mindset. What about anger? Any of those uh, yeah, things? yeah. Okay. So anger is a big one. All really big emotions. Anytime yeah. that they're feeling those big emotions, and then we, you know, just just to be able to have, you know, sometimes somebody else to talk to to sh like hold that it's safe not like space. A kind of thing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Or or a parent, like because sometimes you know it's. It, they just want to have, you know, especially with like the teens and adults. And obviously, you know, it's disclosure that, you know, if, you know, of you course. have to share it, you course. know, but, um, but yeah, just to be able to have them have that safe place to be able to share. This is what's happening, um, you know, in school, this is this kid saying this. And so a lot of it is how they can problem solve through a situation. Um, you know, so again, I use the skills and the, the concepts. Yeah. It doesn't matter what age they are. I may not read the story to them, but I'm using the skill to talk sure. to one of the books. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's I, almost like, oh gosh, if I was summarized, you're really teaching everybody how to do the same stuff, which is ultimately just regulate the system. Yeah. And you're doing that through mindfulness coaching. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it doesn't really matter if you're having any symptoms per se. But if you know you're not right, this would be a, maybe right. a cool place to start. It sounds yeah. like a low barrier to entry with the books and the workbooks, mm -hmm. uh, work uh, the toolkits, mm -hmm. and then you can expand more with one-on-one -on -one work or group work if, if that seems necessary. Oh yeah. Is there an easy way to get in contact with? You? Are you pretty good about like Email. messaging back emails yeah. so through the website? Yeah. Yeah. Info Great. at mindfulness.com. Awesome. Dot com. I can guarantee you're probably going to get a, one or two emails from from yeah. people listening here. So. Um, I love that. But I'm excited to actually. Really, we didn't even dive in, to be honest. So I I'm know. excited to see where um, what this what topics come up in our future yeah. um, appearances. We'll probably have to do like a Friday where we have way more time. Yeah, that um, sounds good. And then I'll send Re home, so so <laughs> so she's not stuck here for hours just uh, monitoring all of our things and making sure we're still being recorded. Um, but I mean. Again, I didn't realize how big this was going to open up. I think we could talk about a lot of cool things over you might yeah. be a regular guest here. So that would be nice. if you're open to it, I think uh, the listeners okay. would really appreciate it too. So uh, thank you so much, Debbie, for following us. Again, um, Debbie Chamberlain, certified mindfulness coach, a lot of other things, um, <laughs> but just an amazing resource for helping people understand how the brain works, how to work within it, how to how to set yourself up for success later from an internal myself kind of <laughs> nice. position, right? Cool. Um, so mindfulness, mindfulnessmatters.com all the way through Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. Um, awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, you know, here I'm Dr. Teams. Uh, we're at Desert Brain and Spine. We work with a ton of people with dysautonomia, right? So with what Debbie is saying, when we don't have a regulated nervous system, that almost always leads to a dysregulated nervous system. That's where dysautonomia comes in, right? The di the bad version of that is POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. And so that's where your heart rate goes crazy and you have a lot of chronic anxiety, fatigue, brain fog, dizziness, focus and attention issues. A lot of people have to quit their jobs. They just become sluggish, fatigued. They can't sleep either, which is crazy. You know, you're tired all the time, but you can't sleep. So um, your gut starts not working. So these are the types of things that we see in the office. She's just trying to help us not have to see those people, which would be amazing. Yeah. You know, I would love to not have a job, in all honesty. Yeah. Um, but luckily, we know what we're doing here, and we help a lot of people with these issues. So, um, so if you guys have any questions on anything, you can reach out to us through the website. You can hit us up on desertbrainandspine.com. Um, if you're having any issues, get connected with Debbie and her crew over there. Just let us know. We will get you guys in contact so we can try to save the world together. Yay. Cool. I like it. Well, it's thank you so much for taking your time today. I, I know, oh my gosh, I'm excited to have another one. Yeah, uh, already, me too. So, me too. Uh, thank you so much. And you guys have an awesome day. We'll see you next time. Thank you.